Evening, everyone. As we told you at the top of the newscast, Barry Larkin has rejected the Reds' one-year contract offer of $500,000 down from his $9 million last year. No negotiating, no counteroffer, just thanks for your 18 years and goodbye. This contract showed me the door, basically. I, I don't think it was, we really want you back. We do want you back, but we want you back at how we want you back, you know, not based on what you as a player, as the captain, as a person, as an icon in the city has done for the city. I will go into spring training and not only compete, but win a starting job at shortstop or wherever it is, and uh, I'll continue to do my thing. But uh, as far as today is concerned, it doesn't look like it'll be in Cincinnati. You know, we had a... Uh, a contract amount that we felt was was fair and fit into our structure and uh, you know what what goes on outside of uh, Cincinnati in the market I, I, I wouldn't even venture a guess. Well whatever you do don't remember Barry Logan this way injured he missed 59 games in 2000 he missed 117 games in 2001's with a groin injury this year it's been calf and hand problems and ultimately the Reds wouldn't pay for a player who wasn't playing. Boy did he ever play. Barry Larkin will finish fourth on the Reds list in games played all time. Third all time in hits. Second in steals. Doubles and in runs scored. His agent Eric Goldschmidt says what the Reds are doing to Barry Larkin is unthinkable. When you propose an offer to a borderline Hall of Fame type of player like Barry Larkin and basically say play for 500000 or or there's the door um, there's really no choice in the matter. Final results of our 12 in touch poll tonight. 68% of you think Barry Larkin should retire. 32% say absolutely not. We thank you for all of your calls. Evening everyone. It would appear the Barry Larkin era is coming to an end. Six games left before the captain jumps ship. Angered by the way the Reds placed a take it or leave it one year, a half a million dollar offer in his lap after 18 years in the same uniform. I'm not making decisions around here. Sure, I can make a decision. I could accept that, that offer. Sure, I could. But I, like I said, it's not, it's not about the money. It's about the principle in which it was handled, the way in which it was handled. I don't think it was handled uh, in a first class manner. Uh, here's a guy who's been with the organization for 18 years, uh, an 11-time All-Star. Uh, what he does, it's not always about numbers. And what he contributes in the clubhouse, helping young players, uh, showing uh, them how to play the game, how to be major leaguers, uh, I think he deserved a little bit more than a suddenly and hastily called press conference saying he's out of here. Final results of our phone poll asking who do you side with in Larkin dispute. 61% of you say the Reds, 39% say Barry Larkin. Thanks for more than 5,000 of you who phoned tonight. The Reds have reportedly received permission to interview the Astros assistant GM and director of player personnel development, Tim Purpuna, uh, to fill in Jim Bowden's spot. Purpura has previously interviewed for GM jobs at Anaheim and at Pittsburgh. Could this be the year that the Cubs get to the playoffs? Aramis Ramirez in the fifth off Scott Randall, upper deck. Cubs up six zip while Kerry Wood did his thing. Tim Hummel, uh, Russell Brandon, Willie Pena, Scott Randall, Ryan Friel, D'Angelo Jimenez. Welcome back, Brandon, and Willie Mo, uh, Jason LaRue, uh, Ray Almeido. Uh, welcome back, Friel. And finally, Darnell Stenson. That would be 12 in all before the Reds got their first hit in the seventh. Willie Moe breaks up the no-hitter, but a chopper beats it out. Reds get two hits all night in the 6-0 shutout. Evening, everyone. It's September, and we are in the midst of a playoff race. Thanks to the Cubbies coming to town. Reds trying to stay out of the cellar in the Central. Cubbies trying to increase their lead to a full game over the Astros, who beat the Giants earlier on today. First inning, Josh Hall in trouble. Two on and two out. Ramos Ramirez smoked to center. Watch Ryan Friel go after this puppy and lay out to make the catch. Worth one more look, huh? Maybe one of the best ever. Reds down one nothing in the third. It is Sammy Sosa, the line drive home run. Tying Mickey Mantle for 10th place all time. 536-37 on the year for Sammy. Let's flash back to April 5th of this season. Paul Bacco up with the bases loaded and the line drive to center. And that's when junior season went down the drain. All three runs cross the plate, blow that one open. Junior would eventually have shoulder surgery. Back to the present. Bases loaded for Paul Bacco again. Another liner to center and Friel 
decides not to dive just to avoid the bad mojo. Clears the bases again. Babaco would be nailed at third. Sean Estes, a complete game four hitter. Cubs stay in first place by one. Eight to nothing in the final. From individual to team achievements, the race for the NL Central, beginning with Dusty's Cubs in Cincinnati. Top of the third, two down. One on for Sammy Sosa. Off Todd Van Poppel. Get out of town. Sosa takes over sole possession of 10th on the all-time home run list, putting the Mick in his rearview mirror. We move ahead at the bottom of the fourth. Cubs up 3-2. Carlos Zambrano against Todd Van Poppel. On an 0-2 pitch, throws a ball. You see the reaction. Having a hard time keeping his emotions in check. Thought he had him there on the next pitch. He does get the call and continues to show that emotion on the mound. Ahead of the fifth, Zambrano against D'Angelo Jimenez. Walks him again. Zambrano not happy, either talking to the umpire or himself. Next hitter is Sean Casey. Going to put him on, too. I want to keep those emotions in check if you're the third starter on a playoff team. Ahead of the sixth, facing Jason LaRue with two aboard. LaRue rips a single to the left. Willie Mo Pena is going to stop at third, but that's all for Zambrano. Later in the inning, Mark Guthrie is on the pitch. Reds have a 6-4 lead. Here's Sean Casey belts one to right center, up and out. A huge rally for the Reds. They lead 8-4. to four. Here's Sammy. The Cubs trailing by three in the eighth. Going to blast John Reedling's pitch for his second of the game. Sosa with a pair, but the Cubs fall short by two. In the losing effort, Sammy does reach some significant milestones. As we told you, he passes Mickey Mantle, sole possession, 10th on the all-time home run list. He becomes the first National League player ever with nine straight 100 RBI seasons, and he sets the record for most homers in any 10-year span, passing the Babe.